is back. And IFA is the first in-person tech conference in the world to take place since the pandemic. Even the American version of IFA, CES, has already announced that they will only be virtual. And that's not even until next January. This was a much different IFA this year. Instead of the usual 30-plus exhibit halls filled with all kinds of tech and the 238,000-plus attendees, this year they were limited by the Berlin government to a maximum of only about 4,000 people. But they not only pulled off their special edition, but they managed to put the tech industry back on track. We always like to speak with the executive vice president of Messe Berlin Group and IFA executive director Jens Heitecker. So even though we are here in our Miami studios and Jens is in Berlin, we don't let a pandemic get in the way. With that in mind, I wanted to know his take on the importance of in-person, face-to-face meetings, and especially tech trade shows. Every business is human, and uh, business has to be done between human beings. And we learned over the last couple of weeks, yes, we have Zoom, we have uh, all the other devices, but at the end, we are tired of this. We want to come together, we want to see into the eyes, we want to have a feeling for the other people, and we want to feel the emotion of, of the get together. How did your exhibitors react to the possibility of a virtual show or that they would even have the option to participate there in person? Our exhibitors reacted very different. Depends where they are based. Are they based in UK, for example? Uh, imagine four or five months ago in UK the situation was worse. And they couldn't imagine that the IFA could happen, that people, journalists, are coming from around the world, from other countries, to Berlin for a trade show. They couldn't imagine. In other global companies, like in American companies, often there's a travel ban. On the other side, a lot of companies said, yeah, that's an idea. And we solved the main problem, the unsafety. They didn't know what will happen in September from then in three, four months. What will happen to the pandemic? What will happen here? So what we offer them is to reduce the risk of pre-investment with smaller presentations, with more flexibility, so that we can see well, how's the pandemic doing, and so that we can decide very late in, in June, July, how to do this. And at the end, you see a lot of exhibitors are already in this show, presenting their innovations, and you see other companies officially not being exhibitors, but communicating around IFA in the city or on the internet, online. And this is the, this is the, the real power, the, the inner power of IFA, that even these companies are attracted to IFA. These days, Jens, we hear a lot about the new normal, assuming we'll even be able to get back to what we thought of as normal. And of course, we're all wondering when we can travel again. Good question, what's the new normal? Uh, we don't know the future yet. Um, yes, but we try to bring a bit of normality back. Uh, normality in these times of pandemic. We have no clue what will really happen in next year or on the long term. It's like in the travel industry. Yes, at the moment everyone is saying, we don't go back to the normal in tourism. Personally, if I can travel to my most beloved destination for holiday, and if, if I feel safe for this destination, I would immediately travel, but I don't feel safe. Maybe, hopefully, in one year from now on, we will feel safe, much safer than today. The pandemic is hopefully done, is finished. And then I think we will see the strong IFA, we will see strong trade shows around the world again, and a strong tourism as well. One of the many different things this year was the introduction of the IFA 2020 Special Edition, IFA Extended Space, a never before seen virtual experience. While I know you had many challenges for the in-person exhibit, Jens, I'm guessing that the virtual experience was not easy either. Of course, we had many challenges. One is a technical challenge. 
we try to develop a new platform, an easier platform for this virtual IFA as a media hub, as a media platform where we easier can uh, stream our press conferences here, we can stream our partners, we can show the products of our exhibitors in a much easier way than before. For this we had only two months and it was a challenge. But the, the real challenge were two. The one is uh, what will be the rules, the restrict, the, 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 uh, the regulations by the authorities. Because in Germany and in Berlin, it's the same as in any other state of Germany, we saw that the um, regulations were only made for the next two or three weeks. And if you plan a show, we need a framework at least in, for eight, ten weeks. So in the mid of August, we had no clue what's the real regulation in these days. We had, we had an assumption. And at the end, we were right with this assumption. This was a good thing. But it was a challenge, and we had to be very flexible uh, for new regulations, new restrictions. And the third was trust. Trust of our attendees, trust of our exhibitors in this situation, in our organization, that we can organize a safe environment in this time, here in these halls, here on our exhibition site. Of course, most companies don't stop innovating, even during a pandemic. So their competitive business plans must proceed. Without the face-to-face -face trade shows, there's a delay in introducing their new products, or maybe even not at all. I don't think there's a new impetus. Uh, of course, they didn't stop to innovate, even during Corona. Maybe it was a little bit harder to coordinate all the people, all the staffs. Often enough, innovation means co-innovation. means bringing together innovators from different companies, different industries. And this, in times when you can't travel, we can't get together, it's complicated. But I think there's another function that's totally underestimated. If we have our normal trade shows, this is a competition of innovation between the exhibitors. And what they do before a trade show, they coordinate all activities in developing, marketing, sales, communication, whatever, to be ready with new innovation at the trade show in fear that the competitor has more innovation. Means this acceleration of innovation inside the companies because they have to develop this to a new point of exhibition is totally underestimated and if we have no trade shows, and we have seen this in some companies, there's a delay of new products of two months, of three months, of four months. And at the end, this is bad for the markets and for the consumers. You manage to still get the tech world together while still following strict health and safety guidelines developed jointly by German public health authorities and of course Messe Berlin, which produces several shows every year. I'm sure that other trade show organizers around the world have been watching what you have done with IFA. So congrats to you and your team, Jens. I think it's the first experience we can share with a lot of other trade show organizers in-house and with our competitors. We had a lot of trade show organizers from around the world here watching out how do we do this. Let's see, the one point. Um, we have learned our own things. Uh, our team was so in, in not in fear, but uh, really worried to do everything to avoid any risk. That maybe we have done a little bit too much, but for a first time, for, for a first show, for a first experience, we did it in the right way. For the next one, we will see what's necessary and maybe what's a little bit too much because it's a burden for our attendees. For, to have three or four registrations or whatever needed, whatever was needed this time to feel safe and to give this feeling of safety to all of our attendees. Danke, Jens. While nothing beats a live IFA experience, the IFA extended space gave us all a great virtual experience. And we'll spend a couple of weeks worth of Into Tomorrow radio broadcasts covering as much 
of this year's IFA as we possibly can. So be sure to visit us at intotomorrow.com. Check out all the posts. We've got a ton of video. You'll see a whole bunch of keynote highlights and, of course, folks introducing brand new products at IFA in person and virtually this year from Berlin. Meantime, stay tuned into tomorrow.